Hello and welcome to our resource manager presentation, focusing today on the employee expense management capabilities of this exciting new application written by Norming Software. We like to describe Resource Manager as a hybrid solution built exclusively for Sage 300 customers that want to manage, track, and approve employee expenses. So the application actually consists of two components. There's a Resource Manager back office Windows application that sits directly within the Sage 300 desktop, as you see here. And the purpose of being an SDK application has many benefits to you as an existing or potential Sage 300 customer. For example, we support the services of System Manager, which include administrative services. So if you're building security groups to restrict access to certain applications within the Sage 300 environment, you notice that Resource Manager appears as one of the core modules within Sage 300. So you can create access profiles based on these security groups and link them with other security profiles you've created for other core modules, such as accounts payable and accounts receivable. That's one of the benefits of being an SDK or software development kit application. Because resource manager tables also reside in the same SQL database, you're able to run data integrity, restart maintenance, database dump and load to manage and maintain the data within Sage 300. And likewise, the other component of System Manager is what we call common services. And this is where you see the fiscal calendar, the company profile, multi-currency, and optional fields as some examples. So Resource Manager is able to use the currency tables within Sage 300 to create a multi-currency environment for employee expenses. And we'll highlight that as part of the presentation on how to enter and approve employee expense reports. And lastly, from a back office perspective, because we're an SDK application, when you look at the license manager within Sage 300, you'll have access based on the number of land pack licenses that currently reside in the Sage 300 system. So in my case, I have a five user land pack installed, which means up to five users could also access the resource manager in the back office. So Resource Manager is very tightly integrated and an exclusive solution built specifically for Sage 300 by Norming Software, who is a gold level development partner for Sage 300 and has won Development Partner of the Year Award for Sage in many jurisdictions around the world. So as part of the employee expenses, let's review some of the setup options that you have for this particular aspect of Resource Manager. When we look at the options, we have integration capability, which allows us to create AP invoices for expense reports that are approved so that we can generate an AP payment to reimburse those employee expenses. This would require, of course, that we need to set up the employee as a vendor within AP, but it does give you an option to make reimbursement of expenses quite easy and seamless. We can also create GL transactions for expense entries and either pay cash advances in advance or just do a manual payment within uh, Resource Manager without having to create AP invoices. We can also integrate these expenses to project and job costs if we want to record these expenses to jobs within PJC. We can also integrate to Canadian payroll or US payroll and assign a pay code for expense reimbursements that would reimburse these expenses to a payroll time card in Sage 300 payroll. And then as for expenses themselves, we can track intercompany expenses. We can limit the expense options based on a monthly, yearly, or daily basis and set per diem amounts or quantity amounts. And you'll see when we get to the employee register how we do that. We can also create budgets for these expenses and maintain control through budget limits against the expense codes. And then we have various options to allow edit of expense entries by the approver or manager during the approval process, or allowing the back office accountants and finance people to enter, reject, or delete entries in the back end, which is the expense batch area here within Resource Manager. We can approve based on a document or a detail line on the expense reports. And what that does is it helps you isolate certain types of expenses for certain managers to approve. For example, you may have three lines of expense entry on an expense report, 
but only one manager needs to approve meals, but two managers need to approve the travel. So you would approve expenses on a detail line basis in that case to allow the one manager to approve the um, meals, but two managers to do approvals on the uh, airfare. So you can mix and match how you create the approval workflows against your expense reports by approving on a detail line level basis. So when we create integration with expense codes, the expense codes themselves allow you to define an alphanumeric description for different types of expenses. And we link these directly to a GL account. What this means is that your employees won't have to know or understand the GL account distribution for expenses when they're recording them on the expense report. Notice that we also have a unit of measure for things like mileage, so you can track a quantity for mileage. We also have a default currency, but notice that we're also able to specify the different currencies that we will accept for these types of expenses on the expense report. We can also assign the various tax codes that apply, GST, PST, and HST in Canada, or county and state taxes in the US. And if you're billing these expenses because they're part of a project for a client, then you can also specify a billing rate and the currency for which you want to bill these expenses. And if necessary, you can add notes and you'll see that we can also create comment lines on the expense reports to add additional information about why an expense was incurred. We can also limit on an expense code level the monthly, yearly, daily basis that we saw under the global settings. So you can mix and match the type of expense limits you want to put on each type of expense. And in the case where you're billing these expenses, you can link them to an AR item number to track those billing amounts for the expenses. Notice that we also have this designation reimbursable. Reimbursable means that we want to reimburse this to the employee, but it is possible to have a non-reimbursable expense because it might be charged to a corporate credit card, and that means that the company's already paid for that expense, and we just want you to record it on the expense report so you know that it's been consumed. There is an import for us to allow credit card files to be imported into the expense reports, which we'll show you when we get to the expense report entry. So again, this is just an easy way for you to track expense codes and build up the number of expenses that you need within the system. Now where those get deployed is at the employee group and employee register level. So because we need information at an employee level, we ask that you configure the employee register within Resource Manager. If you are using one of the payroll modules for Sage 300, we do provide an import to populate this information but we do need a separate register for the employees because we add some additional information such as the expense control when you're recording expense reports for employees. So what this does is it defines which expense codes this employee is able to record on their expense reports. It has the GL account distribution and notice that it also has whether it's active, which means you can have these automatically populated when an employee creates a new expense report. You can also use the limit amount that we've discussed a couple of times and specify what that amount is. You can also specify a quantity limit for mileage purposes. And then you can also track the year-to-date quantity and amount. And if it's a regular expense code, then it appears automatically in a default currency on the expense report. The over limit checking, depending on how you've configured that, can either not be used at all, we rely on the managers or the limit checks that you've specified for each individual expense code to determine how and when an employee can book those expenses. Or you can build that into the system as a warning, which will just pop up a notification to the employee that they've gone over a particular limit, but it won't stop them from posting and submitting that expense report or you can put an error condition on the over limit checking, which will stop the employee from being able to record and submit that expense. <clears throat> In terms of reimbursements, you can specify different currencies for reimbursing the expenses. And in this case, if we're going to be reimbursing through accounts payable, then we would want to specify an AP vendor code for that employee. 
and then the tax as a standard default, depending on where the employee is working, and then the workflow approvals that need to be used to approve those expense reports being submitted by the employee. So speaking of approval workflows, let's go over and show you how we can configure these for employee expense reports. So we use a workflow capability that allows you to build a number of steps within the approval workflow process. You can define as many people within the organization that need to participate in this particular workflow. It could be a specific employee, it could be a supervisor, and the supervisor is someone who's assigned here on the processing page <clears throat> in the employee register. So in this case, Marilyn's supervisor is Freddie, and Freddie will be doing the approval on her expense report if that's the way we've created the approval workflow. So it could be supervisor, it could be part of an approver group, and if it's part of an approver group, then we can specify a number of individuals within the organization that need to do the approvals and, and put various criteria on which of those has to do the approval. So when we look at an approver group, then we can specify who needs to participate. So the required approvers could be someone who's been specified, any of the approvers, all the approvers, or half or more of the approvers. So in the case of two managers being part of an approver group, if we said half or more, then that would just mean one of the two. Uh, that's basically the same as any of the approvers. So depending on the nature of your approver groups, one of these required approvers options would be the most relevant for you. You can also embed within the um, approval workflows a, an ability, sorry, let's go back and change this to the supervisor. And then uh, what I want to do is insert a line to show you a decision process, which is something else that we do as part of the workflow approvals. And what this does is it allows you to put in dollar thresholds for what level a manager has to do the approval. So remember, we talked about being able to establish approvers at a detail line level rather than the full document. And in that case, you could specify a line expense amount that you wanted to record as part of the approval workflow. So that let's say as an example, expenses under $500 only need one level of approval, whereas expenses with a higher limit would require two or more levels of approval. So you can build in some of that logic into these approval workflows to more ma closely match your specific policy and procedure within the organization. So now that we've got a, a deeper understanding of the approval workflows, and we've seen some of the configuration options for how to do those approvals, let's walk you through an actual expense where we'll record the expense as an employee, get it approved by a manager, and you'll see how it updates the expense batch within Resource Manager. And in this case, we'll show it integrating into PJC and also AP for reimbursement. So as we move to the portal, we would log in as the employee. Notice that it supports Windows authentication. So we can map the Windows ID and password you've already created for your employees and use those as a way of um, streamlining the entry for these employees. Notice as well that we integrate to multiple Sage 300 company databases. So you're not limited to a one-to-one -one relationship. Now, this is the employee self-service web portal. This is something that we use for remote access. I'm currently running this on a notebook computer. We can run it through any browser, Safari, Firefox, Chrome, Edge, or Internet Explorer. Uh, but if you want to customize this, you can hide any of the icons that you're not using. And you notice that the grayed out icons are there because I don't have a license currently running in this company. So it says this module is not enabled for you. But fortunately, the expenses are. So that's what we'll be showing in just a minute. But before we do, I just want to highlight this is wallpaper can be customized. And this is a link to the norming website. This could be a link to your own personal company website if you wanted to do that. And this can be published as something you hide behind your firewall for protection. Or you can publish it on a public website page, in which case you would probably want a VPN internet connection, which provides a secure access to this page. 
So by clicking on the expense, it will present a, uh, a list of different types of expenses that Marilyn has previously recorded. So we show various historical information if you choose to publish that to the employee self-service portal. So this is showing a number of expenses that Marilyn has previously submitted and approved and been posted through for reimbursement. We've also got a status of approved that may be approved, but just haven't been posted through for reimbursement or project costing purposes. We have some that have been rejected and we have some that are still awaiting approval. We also have the open status for expense reports that Marilyn has started, but not submitted to the manager for approval. For our purposes, I wanna create a new expense report so you can see how we auto-populate certain types of expenses directly onto the expense report so the employee doesn't have to rekey that information when they're creating a new expense report. Notice that in this case, because we're integrated with project, we pick up the project details, phase, task, the expense codes, and the fact that these are billable, some of which are reimbursable, but one, the air credit, is not. So that's still recorded on the expense report, but would not be included in a reimbursable amount for that employee. We also have mileage capability with a quantity. So if we said they did 1,200 uh, miles or kilometers, depending on which country we're recording that in, it would calculate an extended amount for me. Notice as well that if I incurred airfare in Canadian dollars, but I flew to the US, I could change the currency for the meal to US and notice that the current amount of $100 based on a rate of one to one changes when I go to the US because now the exchange rate is 0.78 and it's $128.14. So we've got different reimbursable amounts that are going to change based on the currency that we have recorded on that particular expense report. So you also have attachments. So if we want to attach a particular receipt, so this could be the airfare or a meal receipt. If you've got a smartphone, you could be just taking a picture of this. It could be a PDF. It could be a Word doc. It could be an Excel file. Any of these are viable options. And you can attach these at an individual line level if you want, or just at a document level. Uh, the import allows us to download source files for credit card transactions. You can create standard formats for those credit cards and import them into populate line detail. So in my case, if I try to save this expense report and try to submit it, we notice that because I've overcharged my mileage, I have a quantity limit of 100 on the expense date that it's not allowing me to do that. Notice that I've also got a limit for my annual, uh, my monthly expenditure of $500, and I've already consumed that for this month. So these are some of the limit checks that you can build into the system if you'd like and avoid people overexpending. So let's come back here and say, uh, we're only going to put in 15 miles or kilometers and uh, here, I'm gonna actually zero out the air credit and remove that line. So when I save this again and try to submit, notice that the lines that had zero amounts disappear. So even though we auto-populate, anything that remains with a zero balance will disappear when I submit the expense report. We remove those automatically for you. Notice as well that we also create an approval audit trail. So Marilyn has submitted the expense report, and in this case, it's being approved by the project manager, which is Ernest. So instead of going to the supervisor, it's going to the project manager in this case. Every action in the workflow will have a date and a timestamp, and any comments that are added will be recorded here. Now, this also highlights the ability to substitute. And substitution means that if the existing manager is away on vacation or traveling on business and not available, they can set up a substitution where the approval will automatically be routed to that substituted employee, given that Ernest is not available. I'll show you that in just a minute here <clears throat> as we 
uh, log out. So before I sign out, I'll just highlight a couple of things here. We have different display formats for the date formats. We can attach photos, personal data, change passwords. But the substitute employees gives us the ability to say, I'm going to be away for the next week from the 13th to the 20th. And during that week, I want to assign someone to do my approvals. So one of the managers can change who does the approvals on a certain time basis. And when that uh, date passes, the system will continue to route the um, expense reports back to the original approver. Notice that you can also assign rights for people to enter expenses on your behalf as well. So I'm going to log out as Marilyn and then log back in as Ernest. In this case, Ernest does have a password. And notice that on his to approve list, he's got a little red circle here with the number three in it, which means he's got three documents that need his approval. And it looks like they're all expense reports that Marilyn have submitted previously. The one we've just done today, October the 13th, EV65, is the one that we want to concern ourselves with today. But let's say that Ernest uh, is away, but he didn't actually use the substitution feature. This is where we could use what we call the to-do list in our admin portal to make sure that there isn't a bottleneck in the company stopping these expense reports from being approved. So what we can do is identify these expense reports, <clears throat> all of which were supposed to be approved by Ernest, but he's been away for a while. So what we could do is flag these and say, I want to approve them here as a central head office function to make sure that Marilyn gets reimbursed for these expenses. Or I could say, let's transfer them over to one of the other managers, Cynthia, and have Cynthia do the approval for these expenses. So I could do the transfer or I could just do the approval through this to-do list in the administrative portal, which is more of a head office type function to ensure that there are no bottlenecks in the system. <clears throat> we also, have this ability to create schedules. Now this is a timesheet reminder, but it could also be an expense approval reminder where we create a routine that sends out an email and you can schedule that to automatically email on a particular day of the week at a particular time, or even send out a, a nag email every three days to make sure that outstanding documents are getting approved on a timely basis. So there's a number of features we build into the system to allow people to maintain consistency in the approval process. And don't forget that we also had the email templates. So the manager could have received an email notifying them that they needed to approve the expense report. And this is where they would use that URL link to record the transaction approval by simply clicking on the URL link. And essentially it would be taking them into the portal to approve the document. So now we're at the document approval stage. If there's an attachment, it will be visible and the manager would be able to open that and see the airfare or the meal receipt that was captured by the, um, by the employee and be able to open that up and view that document in the system. You would also have the ability to review what's reimbursable, what's billable and verify the expenses with any comments. And then at some point, if you're OK, you would say approve with comments. And then that moves the expense report out of the approval console because now it's an approved report. And we talked about the fact that this is fully integrated into Sage 300. So the next time somebody opens up an expense batch, there'll be a notification saying there's an approved document, which happens to be an expense report coming from the portal, the employee self-service portal. Would you like to set that up? When you say yes, it records that entry directly in the back office of Sage 300. So now we've got an expense report here that's been created. And we'll check the details to main, uh, ensure that all of the information has come from the portal directly into the back office. So EV65 was the document number for the expense report. Because we're creating an AP invoice, 
We've defaulted that AP invoice number to match the expense report number. We know that we're creating an AP invoice. It's going to be against vendor 7100 because we've set up Maryland as a vendor in accounts payable. We've got the customer and project information, if that was relevant for the type of expense that we're charging. All the amounts have come across. We have a reimbursable functional amount because it's running multi-currency. And we've got the GL accounts. Now, even though it's approved, we still give the back office people the opportunity to redistribute to a different GL account if that was necessary. And by clicking on the detail line, we can see any optional fields, the allocation across division, region, department, the project allocation, if that's relevant, and the currency that applies. The GL account, as talked about, was specified. This is reimbursable and billable. So all of the details are there. Now, in terms of the approval audit trail, we bring that from the portal into Sage 300 as well. So we can see when it was submitted, when it was approved with a date and a timestamp, and we also have the comments that were added by the employee and the manager. In terms of the attachments, we talked about the fact that these documents will stay with the transaction. So the document that was attached in the portal will also be present here in Sage 300. And then the totals would show any recoverable tax, what's been expensed separately, what's been allocated. So again, depending on your jurisdiction and whether you've got value added taxes or not, some of which may be recoverable, that will be broken down based on the appropriate tax authorities assigned to the expense codes. And then any optional fields, the taxes that were calculated, and then the document totals. So we have a reimbursable amount of 335.94. When we post this transaction, we'll see how it automatically creates a time card entry in PJC because we're integrated to project and job costing, but also it creates and posts the AP invoice. So the AP invoice transaction is created for us and a GL entry to record the expense and a PJC time card to update the projects. So for those of you that might be using PJC, if we go over to the time card entry quickly, you'll see that there's an expense detail for EV65 right here for Maryland, and that expense detail is broken out on the PJC time card for you. So these expenses get automatically distributed to the projects within PJC. For reimbursement purposes, if we're going for AP, then we would go up to the invoice batch list in accounts payable, and we would see an expense batch has been created for that 335.94. By opening up the AP invoice batch, we would create an AP invoice with the same document number as the expense voucher number, and we've recorded those expenses to the specific GL account with the amounts, and we also support drill down. So from accounts payable, we can drill back into the resource manager expense entry, and we can see the detail behind each of these transaction lines in AP. So somebody could go back and look at the approval audit trail, check out any attachments, the totals for tax, and the document itself. So this information is all recorded and seamlessly moved from the portal to resource manager back office and to the appropriate modules based on your integration settings within Sage 300. And at this point, you've got a reimbursable amount set up in AP. You would simply generate the payment batch and you could use a, a check approval routine like Tyrox check approval if you wish to. You could also, rather than cutting a check, use the EFT processing to generate an electronic file transfer to pay those expenses for the reimbursement. So depending on your processes, we can integrate the rest of these transaction details into other aspects of Sage 300 to create a completely seamless cradle to grave transaction process around your employee expenses, all based on the fact that Resource Manager is giving you the ability to record these expenses through the portal and then have them approved online, updated to Sage 300, and all seamlessly integrated without any rekeying or importing and exporting of the data. So we hope you've enjoyed that presentation on Resource Manager Employee Expenses. We invite any questions or comments either through the YouTube chat or if you look us up through norming.com, we're more than happy to take any questions, provide information 
or you can contact your local SAGE 300 business partner for additional information. Thank you very much.